Well, before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one only true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who will well teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much this lesson is going to be tiled as Trinity Doctrine Debunk, because we're going to debunk the Trinity Doctrine. All right, the Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. You can't find the word Trinity anywhere in the scriptures. All right, that was added by the Roman Catholic Church. There is no Trinity. All right, the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are two separate entities. But in the westernized ways of this society of Christianity, the religion of Christianity, they teach that the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are one deity. But that's inaccurate according to the scriptures because they're two separate entities. They're not the same person. They're two separate entities. And, you know, we're going to go through the secular history and go back. Where does the Trinity doctrine goes back to? Where did it come from? Where did it actually took place? Where did it go? What does it go back to? The Trinity doctrine. So this stuff is important. And then we're going to get scriptures out. Now, all you have to do is put in original trinity of ancient Egypt. Because that's where the trinity doctrine come, came from. It came from ancient Egypt. That's where the trinity came from. There is no trinity in the Bible. There is no trinity in the Bible. The trinity doctrine that the Roman Catholic Church took. Came from ancient Egypt. Which goes to Ashar, Asset, and Haru. We're going to read this. And you can look this up. There's more. You know, if you want to go into a holy trinity in ancient Egypt, right there, it goes into it. But we're just going to read this. I don't want to carry this long. Make it a quick hit. It said, in ancient Egypt or Kemet, as it was known to its people at the time, one key concept was the relationship among the three deities, right? Because they say the Father, uh, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You know how they say that? It comes from this. It says one key concept was was the relationship among three deities, Asar, Aset, and Haru. That's how you say it in, in, in Egyptian language. That's how you say it. It says most Americans today know them better by the names of the Greek gave them. See? So in in the in the Egyptian language is Asar, Aset, and Haru. In Greek, it's Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Then it went from that to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, which they, they say the Holy Ghost, right? Which that all goes back to ancient Egypt. That's not in the Bible, all right? So when you look, we can give you an example. Let me see. I want to get a good example here. There is no Trinity, man. You see that? Let me see if I can find that picture. Here it is right here. You see that? goes back to ancient Egypt. But the best one is to show here. That's where you get the, they do the virgin birth, right? That goes back to ancient Egypt. There ain't no virgin birth. They say the virgin birth, right? You say the uh, virgin birth, and then they say the Trinity. That all goes back to ancient Egypt. There is no virgin birth. There is no virgin birth, man. You see that? There's no virgin birth, man. So the Trinity... It goes back to these three deities here. The original trinity. It goes back to ancient Egypt. So you people out there that's not understanding the concept. Well, now you should understand the concept. It goes back to ancient Egypt. See that? Osiris, creator, God, slash, father, thoughts, mind. Isis, Goddess, divine mother, emotion, spirit. Horus, male divine child slash savior, right auction body. So the Trinity doctrine, I'm talking about the Trinity. I'm not talking about the Bible. The Trinity doctrine, the Trinity that is placed in Christianity, that doctrine is not in the, in the Bible. 
that doctrine goes back to uh, ancient Egypt. And anybody can look this up. I'm not regurgitating my own understanding. Look it up. So that's what it goes back to. The Trinity Doctrine. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the Trinity Doctrine. The Trinity Doctrine. Where they say the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son are one being. They took that concept from ancient Egypt. That goes back to ancient Egypt. The Heavenly Father's only begotten Son are two separate entities. Now we're going to validate that. I just want to do a little quick hit on that. Now we're going to prove that the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son are two separate entities. They're not the same. They are not the same. This is Matthew 19, 17. It says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Now this is what the Messiah said unto Peter. Because Peter called the Messiah good master. He said, Good master, how shall I get eternal life? And this is what the Messiah said unto Peter. This is a perfect example. Because if the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are the same, they're one being, why did the Messiah say this unto Peter? This is Matthew 19, 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. That is Yahweh. See? He said, he said, I'm not good. There's only one that's good. That's the Heavenly Father. So they're not two separate entities there. It said, I mean, said, they're, not, they're not the same being there. They're two separate entities. So they're not the same being there. Let's read that again. Because I said the wrong thing. Matthew 19, 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. See? That is Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. See? So Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, told Peter, I'm not good. There's only one that's good. That's the Heavenly Father. So if the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son are one being, like you guys claim, why did he tell Peter, I'm not good? The only one that's good is the Heavenly Father. That's letting you know that they are not the same person. They're two separate entities. They are two separate entities. They're not the same person. They're two separate entities. They're not one being. Because he said the Heavenly Father is good, not me. See? So that cuts that. That already cuts that there. That's letting you know in the scripture that the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are two separate entities. They are not the same. So it's a lock you on that. It's the wrong thing came out. John 10 and 29. My Father which gave them me. See? My Father which gave them me is greater than all. See? Why would the Messiah say that? He said, My Father which gave them me is greater than all. Wouldn't he would just say, I'm greater than all? No. He said, my father. He's telling you. He's letting you know right there that he is not the heavenly father. They're two separate entities. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So he's telling you there that the heavenly father and the only begotten son. That the heavenly father and the only begotten son are two separate entities. The Messiah is saying this. They're not the same being. They're two separate entities. Salakia. <laughs> alarm this is john 10 and 29 it says my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand so it's letting you know right there that the heavenly father and his only begotten son are two separate entities that's letting you know there john 5 and 23 that all men should honor the Son. See, this is giving this is giving you a distinction too between the two. John 5 and 23. That all men should honor the Son. Talking about Yahweh Shai. Even as they honor the Father. Talking about the Heavenly Father Yahweh. That's already giving you two distinction between the two. It says he honor it says he that honoreth not the Son. See, that's giving you a distinction. Honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. So there are two separate entities there. The Son and the Father are two separate entities. Notice, it gave you two separate entities. There's a comma right there. You see that? It says that all men should honor the Son. That's a comma. So the Son is a different deity, even as they honor the Father. The Most High is a different deity. They're, they're two separate entities. They're two separate entities. You have the Most High and you have the Only Begotten Son. So let me re reiterate the word deity. They're two separate entities. One entity is the son and the other entity is, is the father. So they're, they're two separate entities there. See that? They're two separate entities. They're not one being. They're two separate entities. That all men should honor the son. See? Because we have to go through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is our mediator. He's our negotiator with the heavenly father when we repent, when we pray. You see? Even as they honor the father, 
he have he have honor it says he that honoreth not the son honoreth not the father which sent him see so the heavenly father's only begotten son are two separate entities they're not the same they are not the same they are not the same first corinthians 11 and 3 this is to prove this point as well because there's an order how could if 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 the heavenly father let me let me just read the precept this is first corinthians 11 and 3 but i would have you know that the head of every man is yahweh shai so the head of every israelite man is yahweh shai right and it says it says and the head of the woman is the man. So you have the Israelite man over the woman. Right? And it says, And the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. If the heavenly father and his only begotten son are one being, why would the heavenly father be over himself? Or the or, or the only begotten son over the over over himself? If 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 the heavenly father is the only begotten son, how could how could how could the Messiah be over himself? Or or the most high over over himself? That wouldn't make no sense. They're two separate entities. You see that? It says, and the head over Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. They're two, they're two separate entities. If they were one being, how could one person be over themselves? That wouldn't make no sense. One person can't be over himself. If I'm me, how can I be over myself? How can I, how can I be over myself? No. There has to be two separate entities there. So it's, 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 it's Yahweh, then Yahweh Shai. They're two separate entities. It's Yahweh, it's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Then it's Yahweh Shai. Then it's the Israelite man. Then it's the Israelite woman. If Yahweh and Yahweh Shai were one, were one, one person, how could they be over one another? That wouldn't make no sense. If you're one person, you can't be over nothing. You can't be over yourself. You see that? So it's the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. There are two separate entities. There are two separate entities. So you have you have Yahweh. Then it's Yahweh Shai. Then it's the Israelite man. Then it's the Israelite woman. See? It's giving you a, a distinction there. Two separate entities there. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For there is one power. See, one heavenly father and one mediator. One mediator between Yahweh and between men. So there's a mediator that's between uh, uh, man and the Most High. Right? It says the man Hamashiach Yahweh So Hamashiach Yahweh the Messiah, he's our mediator to get to the heavenly father, to pray to the heavenly father. So we got to go through him. We have to go through Yahweh Shai. He's our negotiator with the heavenly father. So we're praying to the Lord. Yahweh Shai negotiates with the heavenly father. Let's him know. He does everything for us through our prayers. So Yahweh Shai, he's our mediator. The heavenly father's only begotten son are two separate entities. See? So they're not the same. 1 Timothy 2 and 5, for there is one power. See, there's one power. There's one heavenly father and one mediator. Those are two separate entities. The heavenly father and his only begotten son between God and men. See, between God and men. The man, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So, Yahweh Shai is our mediator. The heavenly father and his only begotten son are two separate entities. Two separate entities. Hebrews 10 and 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever... Right? Because Yahweh Shai was that sacrificial lamb for us. So we could be able to receive that temple of grace, get that second shot. Right? It says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, right? Yahweh Shai was that sacrificial lamb, sat down on the right hand of the Most High. Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, he sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. He sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, man. Right there. They're two separate entities. Luke 22 and 69. It says, Hereafter shall the Son of Man, see, the Messiah, sit on the right hand of the power of the Most High. He sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, man. The Messiah sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. Luke 22, 69. It says, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of the Most High. So he sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. The Messiah does. They're not one being. They're two separate entities. He sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. Colossians 3 and 1. It says, If ye then be risen with Yahweh Shai, seek those things which are above where Yahweh Shai sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. It's right there in the scriptures, man. So they're not one being. They're two separate entities. They're not one person. The Heavenly Father is not the Messiah. 
The Messiah is not the Heavenly Father. They're two separate entities. Colossians 3 and 1. If ye then be risen with Yahweh Shai, seek those things which are above. It says where Yahweh Shai sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. See, so he sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. He sits on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father. Right? Yahweh Shai does. 1 Peter 3 and 22, it says, Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of Yahweh? It says, Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. It says, uh, read that again, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 3 and 22, it says, Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of Yahweh? It says, Angels and authorities and powers being subjected unto him. See, Yahweh Shai, he sits on the right hand side. Who sits? It says, Who is gone into heaven? Yahweh Shai did, right? He was beamed up. When you go into that, uh, I think it's uh, that, I think it's that first Peter. Is it, no, it's Acts, Acts 1 and 9 through verse 12, right? He ascended into heaven. He was beamed up. It says, Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand side, right hand of the Most High? Yahweh Shai is. It says angels and authorities and powers being made subjected unto him. See? So the Messiah and the Heavenly Father, man, they're two separate entities. That Trinity, that Trinity doctrine goes back to ancient Egypt. Anybody can put that. You can just put original Trinity of ancient Egypt and it'll pop up. So the Trinity is nowhere in the scriptures. It's not in the Bible. All right. The Heavenly Father's only begotten Son are two separate entities. That word Trinity is nowhere in the scriptures. It's nowhere in the scriptures. So Lord willing, that's what's edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.